Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. We are here to hear from William Doyle, the award-winning author of American Insurrection, James Meredith and the Battle of Oxford, Mississippi, 1962, and Inside the Oval Office, the White House tapes from FDR to Clinton, and he's here talking about his new book, A Soldier's Dream. Thanks very much, Darren. Sure. Thanks for in. And thanks very much to the NYU Lillian, Verner, Lillian Vernon uh, Writers House for having me. Um, I'd like to talk a bit about my book, A Soldier's Dream, and then uh, ask Darren and the audience for any, any questions about it. This book came, out, came about as the result of my reading a newspaper article in the summer of 2007 about a young American soldier who was being hailed as a martyr by Iraqis. And when I read that story, I thought, boy, that sounds interesting. How did that happen? Who is this man? And uh, he had died in an IED attack. The man's name was Captain Travis Patrickwin. And in the history of the Iraq War, I'd never heard of such a thing about an American soldier being hailed as a martyr. And uh, this happened in a city that was then the epicenter of the Iraqi insurgency. Uh, the, and in fact, at the military memorial service for Patrickwin and his fallen colleagues, uh, Army Specialist Vincent Pomonte and Marine Major Megan McClung, a delegation of Iraqi sheikhs and Army and security officers came in to pay their respects to the fallen Americans and to offer Islamic prayers of mourning for them, which was a striking scene in the history of the, of the Iraq War. I had to find out more about this story. And as I interviewed scores of Travis Patricklin's American and Iraqi colleagues, I came to realize that perhaps his story is critical to understanding America's role on the world stage in the post-Bin Laden, post-Arab Spring era, and maybe even to discover more about what it truly means to be an American. Um, the historical impact of what Travis Patricklin and his colleagues did was rather striking. In fact, I came to realize that Patrickwin was a key player at a key moment in the Iraq War. In fact, the war began to turn around in mid-2006, months before the famous surge started happening, uh, as Patrickwin and his military and intelligence colleagues helped Iraqis launch something that was called the Awakening, which was a Sunni tribal revolt against al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, of course, has never really conquered and held large pieces of territory in the world. There are some exceptions. Uh, but what happened in Anbar province was al-Qaeda basically conquered the province. And they set up a parallel government, Sharia law, courts, a parallel uh, ministries even of government. And the rule of this version of radical, radical Islam, or anti-Islam, I would call it, was so offensive that the local Iraqis rebelled against it, and we helped them, and the awakening was born. Uh, the awakening facilitated the surge, and both turning points helped save Iraq from what was a total collapse and total full-scale civil war in 2006 to a different kind of outcome, which is still terribly dangerous, but it's transformed in the last five years. And I uh, first wanted to know who Travis Patricklin was. Who is this man who Iraqis said helped shape the course of the Iraq War? He was actually born in the Midwest, and he joined the Army on the day he finished high school in 1993. He was a devout Catholic and Christian who happened to believe that uh, he, he, did, he, he refused to believe that his religion was right and other religions were wrong. In fact, he studied the Quran very carefully and concluded that authentic Islam was our greatest ally, America's greatest ally, in conquering al-Qaeda and helping to lead and inspire the world. And I thought that was a radical insight that certainly changed my views on Islam and how we behave on the world stage. He, he, he was fascinated with Arab history, Arab culture, Arab food, Arab poetry. He learned Arabic uh, thanks to the military for a year, uh, over a year. He studied Arabic intensively. And he traveled to the Middle East, to Kuwait, to Jordan, and plunged into uh, Middle Eastern culture. And he loved it. He became a special forces support soldier. And he went to Afghanistan in 2002 in the first wave of American soldiers to strike back at al-Qaeda and the Taliban after 9-11. And he won a 
Bronze Star for leading troops in combat there. Now, in 2005, he was assigned to be the tribal affairs officer for the U.S. military in Ramadi, Iraq, which was, one journalist called it, the most fucked up place on earth. Uh, reporters would scamper through the ruins of Ramadi and say, this reminds me of images of Hiroshima and Dresden and Stalingrad. It had collapsed completely. It was the provincial capital of Anbar province and basically the headquarters of the Al-Qaeda Caliphate that was, they were attempting to launch in Iraq. Right away, three things were obvious to Travis Patrickwin and his colleagues. They had to attack Al-Qaeda forces with firepower, and they also had to rebuild the shattered local Iraqi police force and reach out to the remaining tribal sheikhs, a lot of whom had fled the horror of this. And there weren't many left. And uh, although he was only a junior officer, Patrickwin became the key liaison between the military and the Sunni sheikhs in their attempts to launch the awakening movement uh, that helped transform the war. I think Travis Patrickwin is a symbol, not only of the Americans who have served in Iraq, but the Americans who have died there, and the many Americans who have helped the Iraqis try to build a new nation out of the horror of this war. Perhaps the best way of understanding who Patrickwin was was to hear what Iraqis say about him, what they told me. In the words of Sheikh Sattar Abu Risha, who was the man who created the Awakening Movement, Travis Patrickwin was, quote, an extraordinary man who played a very, very important role. He was my brother. He spoke Arabic, and he looked like an Arab man. When, we, when he came at the start of the awakening, we needed someone like him. He was humble and friendly, and uh, he was always helping me. He helped us with weapons and ammunition. He helped deliver food to people who needed help, who were in trouble. And he defended women and children against the terrorists. He was very, very important in building rapport between the U.S. and the sheikhs. Captain Patrickwin was extraordinary. One Baghdad-born interpreter told me, Patrickwin was in love with Iraq. He was addicted to the culture. He was obsessed by it. He loved the food, the people. He loved everything about Iraq. And another Baghdad-born interpreter told me, Iraqis can like you, but they loved him for a lot of reasons. He had a magical personality and a trustful face. His presence was noted immediately. Iraqis loved to talk to men with a mustache. And he had a mustache, a suntan, dark skin, and a big muscular body. He looked like an Arab. Beside that, his heart was connecting to these people. For the average American soldier, Iraqis can be hard to sit down and talk to. But when Iraqis sat down to eat with Captain Patrick when they could tell he enjoyed eating with his hands as they did, and he didn't fake it. They thought he was telling them, I'll do whatever I can to show you that I'm genuine. He gave Iraqis the most honorable and honest picture of the American people and the American military in particular. They thought he was the true American heart. And this Iraqi-born interpreter concluded, my God, there is no one in the world who could have formed a closer connection with the Iraqi people than Travis did. They adored him. A former Iraqi uh, Air Force general told me, Americans haven't appreciated the lesson of what Patrickwin and his colleagues did. It was a miracle, an absolute miracle. America has not learned the lesson it should have. We need people like Patrickwin in the American military, not just for Iraq, but for all the Middle East, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and elsewhere. People who are principled and people who can win the hearts and minds of the people with their culture and their minds, not their weapons. Patrickwin thought we had to reach out to the grassroots who were in Iraq, that we couldn't try to do things from the top down because the Iraqi government was non-existent or horribly dysfunctional. And many American policymakers were trying to force things from the top down. That was not working. He also thought we should reach out to insurgents. He thought we should identify insurgents who were reconcilable and negotiate with them and talk to them and try to flip them over to our side to fight al-Qaeda because the insurgency, of course, was, was uh, very uh, factionalized. And Patrick Wynne also thought that we had to be humble and show respect to Iraqis and deal with Iraq on its own terms rather than try to make us more like, make them more like us. I think that's a tremendous insight for how America does business in the world. Um, he said, if you want to stabilize things, you're going to have to cut the crap on all this idealism and deal with the sheikhs. 
Now, Sheikh Sattar Abu Risha, who was his Iraqi partner in all this, who launched the awakening, who really created all this,